Oh, here she comes. Woo! <laughs> I tell you what, she is a handful. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is absolutely amazing, amazing, amazing. I wanted to kind of do a new tour of the reptile zoo for you guys because we've gotten a bunch of new animals in, and I wanted to just kind of show them up. And a bunch of you guys have been asking, like, can you do a cage by cage short? So I'm going to do the best I can do to kind of hit every cage, tell you a little bit about the animals, show you what the cage are like, what the animals like, and all that type of stuff. I hope that you guys will enjoy it. What do you say? We push our problems aside for the next, however long this video is, and have an amazing amazing day together. Now obviously as soon as you walk into the Reptarium, you see Bowser's enclosure right here. It's almost a thousand gallon tank that has three waterfalls that are actually on three fluval canister filters that keep it nice and clean. Bowser kind of cruises around, keeps over here in the corner. We've been actually thinking about adding something else, whether it be another snapping turtle or possibly even a bunch of fish. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's a great feature when you walk through the doors at the Reptarium to see something so absolutely beautiful and not to mention we do have our little pet coral snake over here that a lot of people look at and go is that really a snake of course it's just our pet plastic snake and then of course to the left when you first walk in you have our tortoises we have speedy the sulcata tortoise Franklin the leopard tortoise along with my old girl over here and another little male over here these guys are absolutely incredible not only do I love tortoises but it's so cool that kids can come in and feed the tortoises definitely one of the big hits at the reptarium then there's my big girl Lucy's cage. Look at how gorgeous she is looking today. And of course, this is a 10 foot by six foot by eight foot tall cave. Has a bunch of terracing in it. Has a nice water feature over here. And yes, a lot of people have asked me, will I ever fix the waterfall that comes down from the banyan tree? Yeah, that's something that is on my plate. Just have a lot going on. It's gonna take a day or so to really get in there and figure out how to do it. Because basically what happens is we have an intake right there that goes for the waterfall. And whenever she defecates in the water, it actually clogs the pump. So I have to make some sort of a cover over here for the intake so that no debris gets into the pump and actually breaks the pump, if that makes sense. But nevertheless, I love Lucy. She definitely loves this absolute enclosure, and it's definitely a really showstopper as soon as you walk into the Reptarium. And some people that come to the Reptarium actually miss the fact that there is a chameleon cage right over Bowser's pond, and of course, that is guacamole, the Mellor's chameleon. The second largest species of chameleon on the planet. Guacamole, isn't it great? handling animal but sure is gorgeous. This is certainly an underrated lizard right here. Of course this came from my friends Forrest and Desiree down in Indianapolis. Of course this is an alligator lizard or an abronia. Just look at the color on this one. This thing is so absolutely gorgeous and of course this is the cage that they're in now. They have automatic misting systems. They have lots of caves and crevices. All kinds of places to hide and they absolutely are thriving here. Next couple cages when you walk in are actually Pickles the Biot Green Tree Python. And then we have a male veil chameleon or Coloptratus that is a little bit of a feisty little monkey, but absolutely incredible. Then we have our Jackson's Chameleon Cage. We have one male in here and a few females kind of cruising around. You can see the male right back there. He's absolutely incredible. And of course with the Jacksons, the males have the horns, the females don't, and they're a live bearing chameleon. We actually have four horn frogs. We have strawberry pineapple here, a really gorgeous horn frog. And then of course we have the famous Snoop Frog. I mean, this thing is absolutely absolutely incredible. It's actually a fantasy frog. And then we have a little male up top as well as another normal ornate female. We have Snaz here, the normal Burmese python that was actually donated to me by my friend Rhonda. And you can see he's got a pretty cool cage. He can crawl up on these rocks over here. He's got a few crevices over here. But to be honest with you, he spends most of his time either in the water or just hanging out on the hot spot in here. He is an absolutely incredibly tame animal and one of our favorites to pull out for people to hold. We have the Mata Mata turtles in here this tank and the one thing I really wish that we had more of at the Reptarium was more aquatic stuff. We have a handful of aquatic tanks but I absolutely love it and I wish we could add some more turtles to it but the Mata Matas are amazing. Of course we have my good girl Daisy here. What a beautiful snake. She is so absolutely incredible. Right now she's hugging the heat right now. There's actually a hog pad underneath right here as well as the hot spot up top and she's absolutely loving it. She had a nice big meal the other day so she's digesting over here. She is definitely one of the gentle 
little giants that we can pull out for sure. People love her. Here's my boy Fatty Wap right here, and this of course is his cage. And this is basically the reptile prime cages that we will be selling for ball pythons and bearded dragons and even some leopard geckos. This is one of the designs right here. You can see he has some stuff to climb up over here. He can get right over here on the ledges for the hot spot. He can get into a cool spot, a little hiding spot over here if he wants to. He absolutely seems like he loves it and he is an absolute sweetheart. You guys know that I absolutely love my dart frogs. We actually have three species of Tinctoris. These electric blue ones are absolutely ridiculous. And I definitely want to get some more dart frogs in my future. There's a whole bunch of different species and subspecies that I would love to work with. But these things are absolutely incredible. And every day I just love feeding them because they are such an amazing animal to watch. I absolutely love this animal here. This is actually a pure Darwin's albino carpet python. Absolutely a stunning snake. I always talk about I want to give people the opportunity to see things that they're not going to see very often in zoos and certainly not going to be able to handle and touch. So this Molendorfi or 100 flower rat snake certainly is one of those animals. It's absolutely stunning and certainly not something that you're probably going to ever get a chance to hold almost anywhere else. This albino Kunisur Island rat snake would certainly fall into that category as well. Something that you don't see hardly ever and it's just really cool that you can take it out and handle it. It's a little bit hyper but it's not a biter or anything like that so it's absolutely an amazing snake. We have a couple cages of gargoyle geckos with two female gargoyles in each of them. Absolutely cool animals. And these guys are probably going to be out of the zoo here pretty soon because they'll move back over to BHB for the breeding season and we'll have to replace them with something else. But we still have some other cool geckos here. I always say that about 80% of the animals at the Reptarium can actually come out and get handled. And certainly when someone comes in that's not very experienced or maybe even a little bit timid about handling snakes, Honey, the pastel piebald ball python, is usually my go-to snake. I absolutely love this cage. Cage, and I actually think it's maybe one of my best cages when it comes to reticulated python. You can see Sunfire up there at the very top and basically there's just so many ledges and places for her to go where she can come down here, she can go way up by the light, all the way over to the cool side and that's really what a lot of retics in the wild do. They do a lot of climbing into crevices and stuff like that so I absolutely love this cage and Sunfire's in shed right now but she is becoming a really sweet snake. Then there's my guy Abasuku over here who's definitely very food aggressive. The thing I like about this habitat is again all of the cliffs in area that she can climb on. She loves to get way up there by the light and get a nice basking area but she can also be down here in a big water bowl is really good and oh here she comes. Woo! <laughs> I tell you what she is a handful. She is always hungry but she is a super cool animal and of course this is a night Nile monitor which is a melanistic much like Toothless the black dragon but this is an African Nile monitor where Toothless is an Asian water monitor. Everyone loves potato. Of course, the Centralian Blue Tongue Skink, definitely one of the fan favorites when people come out. And people all the time always will come in and say, this is the one that escaped. Yes, potato is the one that escaped. Thankfully, we found this little cheeky monkey, but this is where he presides in his beautiful cage. What a great animal. This is Flaming Hot Cheetos enclosure right here. He is just such an absolutely beautiful animal. And again, it gives some opportunity for him to do some hiding, some climbing. He loves it up here where he can actually get right underneath the basking light. And again, Again, comes out all the time with kids. It has a little bit of sharp nails. Other than that, a great animal. Of course, my girl Bella here needs no introduction whatsoever. She is absolutely amazing and I showcase her so much. If you guys are watching the vlog and don't know who Bella is, the rhino iguana, then you haven't been watching long enough because she is an absolute beautiful animal. And she's definitely a jealous little monkey too. Whenever Elvis or any other lizards are out, she is always super jealous of them. Another animal that doesn't need any introduction is my boy Elvis here. What's up, buddy? Of course, my Asian water monitor that is just a puppy dog tame animal. And again, one of those animals you take out and people are just like, what is going on here? You just don't think of an animal that is like this, that is just so curious, so friendly, so absolutely awesome. We have my extremely fresh shedded Casper here, literally just shed this morning, looking absolutely incredible. And much like so many of the habitats, he loves to climb on all of these little crevices in here. He absolutely loves the habitat, but he's a great snake to get out because he is so darn gorgeous. I absolutely love these little alien type geckos right here. These of course are Europlates frimbriata, the giant leaf tailed geckos. Absolutely stunning. And they're such great camouflage that literally there's one right in the back over here and you can barely see it just blends right in. Here's our Cuban night and old jumper over here. He's absolutely cool. And a lot of Cuban night and olds are not very tame. This guy is super, super docile. He definitely likes to run a little bit. That's why we call him jumper. But other than that, he's a great, great animal. And as I'm going through and giving you guys a tour, do me 
a favor, go down in the comments. Let me know what animals you're really excited about if you ever come to the Reptar and which ones you guys want to see. And if you want me to do highlights on specific animals a little bit more, now that you're getting to see more and more what's at the zoo. Here's my little Dumeril's boa again, a nice crown boa that comes from Madagascar that eventually get eight or 10 foot long. But she's just a little girl right now, but she is super, super calm and really a beautiful snake. And speaking of an absolutely gorgeous snake, of course there's this D. Alberts python. I've talked about it before. Uh, they're just absolutely super iridescent, beautiful snakes, and typically not the tamest of snakes. This one here happens to be a puppy dog tame one, which makes it absolutely incredible. And then we have Tiger Lily, the Brazilian rainbow boa. I absolutely have to have at least one Brazilian rainbow boa over because they're not only unbelievably beautiful snakes, but oftentimes just really placid. And Tiger Lily certainly fits that bill. Here's a couple animals you guys see all the time. Of course, this is Night Fury, and this is Night Fury's habitat. And people ask me sometimes, when it comes to some of the animals like Night Fury or Toothless or Salt and Pepper, like what's going to happen when they get big? We have plans to grow their size enclosure. So for now, Night Fury is fine in this cage, but probably within about two months, he's going to need something bigger. And of course, Toothless is another animal that is going to eventually get much, much larger than his habitat, which is completely fine. He's going to get as big as Elvis and even bigger. He is absolutely absolutely incredible and as he grows we'll continue to grow his habitat. There are two giant day geckos in this cage, Felsuma grandis, absolutely gorgeous little dudes. They're hiding at the moment but when they come out oh my gosh and when you feed them their hunting is amazing. Definitely got to film that soon. We actually have a pair of the Lichianus, the biggest gecko in the world. Of course this is my female Big Bertha that's only about a year old. The male is about six months younger than her so he's still a little bit small but she is absolutely stunning. I've talked about the gator tank a lot too. All six of the gators are out right now. They're all kind of like begging for food, if you know what I mean. They're waiting for that clicker to click in so that they can eat. They are absolutely all amazing. I've said this before, this enclosure is one of my favorite enclosures in the entire zoo. Of course, these are where our monkey tail skinks live, and they are all over the place. Right now, right in that corner, that is actually the female down there. The male, I think, is way up top there, but every day, I just get such a kick out of it, because in the morning, they're always right up front. They're eating, they're drinking, stuff like that, and then they slowly migrate back to kind of hiding throughout the day and then about six or seven o'clock at night they come back down and they hang out right here again usually right underneath that leaf <laughs> they're just such cool animals my chicken strip he is getting so big it's amazing just since we moved over here to the zoo you know five six months ago that he is like tripled his size he is doing so well and like i've talked about he actually has mellowed out a lot we take him out almost every single day so he is getting better and better with age <laughs> what an absolutely incredible animal my argamas prime not much else needs to be said. One of the most entertaining animals I own. This is an animal I probably don't talk nearly enough about. It's absolutely incredible. This is actually Darwin, the Centralian Carpet Python. What an absolutely gorgeous animal. And again, his habitat's really cool because they come from areas where there's a lot of rocky outcropping. And this is kind of perfect for him to kind of thermal regulate, get way up on the basking heat, or stay down here on the cold side. And again, I really should highlight him a lot more. One animal maybe I highlight too much, is my girl Perdita here but again she is just so amazing and I hope that you guys don't mind that I highlight her so much because she is truly a stunning snake and again you can kind of see her habitat multi layers just like sunfires you know lots of places for her to climb to change her thermal regulation as far as temperature goes and of course we have our arachnid wall that is coming together with any luck here later this week we'll have it completely done or at least within the next couple weeks and we can have all of our bugs in here I think it'll be really cool to have kind of one central area where you can see everything we have Ricky the Jampea Dwarf Reticulated Python. Of course, it's Lavender Albino, which means that it's actually half mainland, half Jampea. But he's about eight years old and only a little over 10 foot, so I don't think he's going to get much better. He loves hanging out right up there. It's kind of cool because he's got a little bit in the hot spot, he's got a little bit on the cold spot, but there's lots of different levels and layers that he can go in this habitat. Someone asked me about Verde the other day. He said, why haven't we seen Verde recently? She is still doing absolutely well, and yes, she is one of those animals that as she gets larger, it's going to get a larger and larger larger habitat, eventually one that is heavily aquatic for sure. But she is still on live chicks, that's all she'll eat, but she at least is eating really well. The other frogs that we have other than horn frogs, of course, are Chunky Monkey, the African bullfrog, or what they sometimes call a pixie frog. He is actually a male, so he's not going to get nearly as big as, say, a female that will probably get about twice, maybe even two and a half times his size. He's pretty much full grown, but he is certainly chubby. And there's my guy Crackle, of course, Snap Crackle and Pops counterparts over here. And of course, now we have the female Crispy, 
uh, blackhead pythons are really quite amazing. And again, they'll come from that area with lots of rock crevices and places for them to climb. So Crackle uses them a lot. This is a little snake that I don't show off nearly enough. I mean, look at how incredible that is. This, of course, is an Asian vine snake. And just look at how it keeps that tongue stuck out. And as I move the camera, it actually moves towards the camera. Really intelligent snakes. Really quite amazing. I mean, that thing is ridiculous. And it's going to get quite a bit larger, but right now it's doing really well. It's eating fish. They love to eat little house geckos, stuff like that. So they are unbelievable. Very interesting and very peculiar snake. But when we let it go in this environment, it literally just disappears into the trees. And you can literally have a hard time sometimes even spotting it. What a cool little snake. And I know there's going to be some animals that you guys see all the time. And then there's other animals I don't show nearly enough. But Sweetie is one that you guys probably remember. Of course, the super tame blood python. And look at this. This is deep in shed. Look at the eyes just completely clouded over. And still, Sweetie is an absolute sweetheart. So she is absolutely changing people's minds about amazing blood pythons. A couple of snakes really quick that are really good animal ambassadors. First would be Peaches, the hypo Honduran milk snake. Ooh, doggy, that is one gorgeous snake. And then the other one would actually be Maisie the corn snake. Now, both Peaches and Maisie were donated to us by a friend of ours that did educational shows with these two for many years. So now they're at the zoo making kids' lives happy and everyone else that comes in. So it's good that they were always educational animals and now they are really getting handled a tremendous amount. And a lot like the monkey tail skin cave, I've often said that this emerald tree boa habitat is really one of my favorites when it comes to the entire reptarium. You guys know Tazzy, the Argentine blue tegu. What an amazing animal. And he's very predictable. He spends a lot of time hiding right down here under the water dish. And then when he's out, he'll usually come up and bask right on this top ledge. But he has lots of options and he is an absolutely wonderful, wonderful animal. This is the actual leopard gecko cage that we'll be selling at Reptile Prime. The exact same one. And it'll come in a little bit of a like Australian red desert type of color too. But nevertheless, the same thing. So we have a handful of really beautiful leopard geckos here that are super habituated to handle so that when kids want to handle a gecko, they can handle these guys. This is a Max Snow. And then over in the corner here, this beautiful little monkey is a Bold Bell. This is one of our jungle carpet pythons that are on display here. And strangely enough, she was one of those animals that we had at the zoo when we first opened, and she just didn't like it over here. So after about a month, we had to move her back over to BHB. And then she was doing extremely well over there. So we decided to give it one more shot. And now she's doing great. She's eating, she's handling really well. So she looks like she's going to be a permanent fixture here at the Reptarium as well. A couple more of the usual suspects that you guys hear a lot about. Of course, this is Helen, the no-eyed albino ball python. And this is her habitat here. And I talk about all the time how she climbs up onto all the different ledges all the time, which I find just absolutely fascinating. Then, of course, there is Ben and Jerry, probably the most famous of the snakes that we have right now. Everyone that comes in is always just like, where's Ben and Jerry? Because, again, you're not going to go very many places and get an opportunity to see a two-headed snake up close and personal. And I love that little smiley face on Ben and Jerry. They're doing really well, and like I had mentioned, we upped their food to twice a week, and it seems like it's already paying off, and they're starting to look a little bit more chunky. Then, of course, there is salt over here, and pepper is over in the back over there. This is where we keep them when we're open. Of course, we keep them still in quarantine and back when they're off, so we can just monitor their food and stuff like that. Yes, they will eventually have to get a much larger cage, and I talk about the fact that with our normal alligators, we'll raise them up. When they get too big, we send them back together, and they send us other ones. Salt and pepper will stay with us for their entire life, so as they get bigger and no longer fit in these, they will go into different habitats and bigger and bigger all the way until hopefully they're big adult alligators. And there's my little guy Nova over there. Hey Nova, what is going on? Again, a huge crowd favorite. People love when Nova is coming up. Look at, he's so curious. What's going on, buddy? He'll literally come right up to the front of the cage, almost like a Bella, to be totally honest with you. So Nova is amazing. And of course, there's my girl Sunrise. Now listen, I didn't hit every single cage, but I hit the vast majority of cages. So I hope that if you want to come visit the Reptarium, you have a better idea of what we have here. Maybe there were some animals you didn't even realize we have. Maybe I featured some stuff you already knew about that you wanted more to know. Hopefully you can come visit us one day, but Sunrise is certainly always going to be one of my favorites. She is just such an absolutely docile, beautiful snake. And again, oftentimes when people come and they've never held a snake, they almost always end up holding Sunrise just because she's so placid and absolutely wonderful. So more or less that has it. That is the ultimate reptarium tour, cage by cage, or almost cage by cage. Again, I'm sure I missed a few things. So if I miss something, don't get freaked out. Like, oh my God, you didn't show this. Trust me, everything's okay. And I hope, again, that one day you can come visit and kind of hold the stuff. Because again, that's the thing I think that is so amazing about the 
this journey that we've been on at the Reptarium is the fact that almost everything that you guys saw today, you can actually hold within reason. There's a few things you can't, but hey, listen, it is absolutely amazing, and I am loving every minute of it. And thank you guys for all your support, coming, sharing, doing all those types of things. You guys are absolutely amazing, and I love you guys so much. Can you do me a couple favors before we get out of here? Can you smash that like button if you like the video? Can you turn those post notifications on if you want to know when I upload a video, which is every day, every day, every day at 9 o'clock in the morning Eastern Standard Time. Remember to comment down below. Tell me your animal that you want to see more of. Tell me which animal, if you came to the Reptarium, you'd want to spend time with. Be kind to someone, and I promise I will see you guys tomorrow.